There are lots of officially licensed games on the market in all genres, from Pro Evolution Soccer and FIFA games to Codemasters F1 and Dirt Rally. Despite having bugs, these generally give a decent to brilliant experience in the genre. Can the game that we are reviewing today also deliver the same? Welcome to Total Reviews, the web show where we take a look at games of interest and see if they really are worth a purchase, in partnership with Games Planet, where you can purchase games at a massively discounted rate. This episode is all about WRC5, the latest rally game in the WRC officially licensed series. Developed by KT Games, this marks the first time this particular development team has attempted a racing game in any form, taking over from the previous developers who bought the franchise back in 2010 after a five year absence. Only asking for a minimum spec of an Intel i3 processor, 4GB of RAM and an NVIDIA 98000 GTX series or AMD HD Radeon 5750. This game really doesn't need much to run. The only spec that is a little bit on the high side is a 25GB hard drive space which, after playing it, seemed like a lot. I'm going to get straight into it. This game is advertised as the best rally simulation. It isn't. It isn't even close to it. It isn't even close best to the best rally game or racing game, but we're going to get onto that in due course. See what I did there? Course? No? Okay, moving on. WRC5 comes with all the content you expect from an officially licensed game. This means that you get all the official cars with their respective drivers and liveries from Sebastian Loeb to Robert Kubica to Sebastian Ogier. Ford, Hyundai, Volkswagen and Citroen all make an appearance here to match the drivers. In addition to that, you also get the entire WRC Rally season list, from Monte Carlo to Australia, Finland, Sweden, Germany and Wales, plus more. You also get a very neat career mode in which you start at a rally school. Yes, they do actually have a rally school in it where they teach you all about taking corners, braking, four-wheel drive cars, two-wheel drive cars. They also teach you about advanced maneuvers such as a Scandinavian flick and it's... It, pretty good I, I do like the whole career system that they have in it and you work your way up through the team starting in junior WRC and moving through to WRC 2 and then WRC all of this is wrapped in a very solid interface we're moving through menus and setting things up it's an absolute doddle it was very very easy to get it done um, going through the menus in the career list and getting to events and a calendar and team management all of that was there it looked very very good well done there, it's a very polished interface, so I was very, very pleased with that. However, it's at this point things start to fall apart for me, and quite rapidly too. I'll be honest, like I said, though it was advertised as the best rally simulation, I wasn't really expecting it to be that. I saw this more as a, a simcade style game where there would be some decent simulation aspects on an arcade game, or an arcade-ish game. Something similar to perhaps a rally version of Gran Turismo. I know Gran Turismo has rally in it, but a pure rally version of Gran Turismo or Forza perhaps. So maybe a little bit more towards a rally version of Project Cars. What I saw though was not that, sadly. Uh, the main point of a driving simulator is being on the track itself. Now, once I got onto the track, uh, you know, through the settings, it was very, very promising. Uh, the car had a lot of detail, pretty high levels. Graphically, it was visually appealing in the sunshine or during dawn and dusk. It looked very good. The tracks were all lined with pretty nice trackside objects, you know, ranging from trees to a crowd, buildings, poles, fences. This actually gave me a sense of driving in an actual event at an actual location as opposed to in the middle of nowhere. And despite being a game, that does change the feeling you have when you play it. And this is something that it's, it's universal and unanimous for all games. If it has a living, breathing style environment, it just makes it feel better. It could be the greatest game in the world, but if the environment is empty, you don't really feel like playing it and I, I don't know why this is the case but it just is so WRC5 did have that which meant that it felt like you were in a living environment which I think like I said I think is very very important but whilst all this is all well and good there's no point having all this detail if the tracks themselves are void of character now despite the fact that they're all inspired by real life tracks, and yes, they are inspired, they're not copies of any of the real life tracks, you don't get a single real life track in WRC5, which I found very, very disappointing. And they also, the inspired tracks, they lacked that rally character, you know, 
most of the corners felt very flat. There was no real camber to the corners. Some of them, of course, did have, uh, most notably in Sweden, the corners did have some pretty decent camber uh, coming down the hills and things like that. But generally, they lacked the rally character um, that you, you expect. You know, the, the fact that when you're, on a, when you're on a normal road, you expect things to be flat. When you're on a racetrack, you expect things to be mostly flat. When you're on a rally track, you expect things to be pretty crazy. You know, you expect some major dips, you expect some, a lot of jumps, you expect things to, even a straight piece of road shouldn't be flat. It's still got bumps and a camber, left to right, whatever it is, it's got to be there. Mm, almost all the tracks, despite having variety in the location, length and width, felt pretty much the same. And that was flat. They all felt flat. And whether this is, you know, having to do having to do with the tracks being made as basic as possible to cater for a casual market, or down to some bad modelling, maybe the you know the model wasn't actually uh, made and it didn't turn out the way they wanted it to, or down to bad physics, I don't know. What I do know though is that with my steering wheel, I really didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy the game. Checking through the game settings and car setup screens, I found myself disappointed because the controls were very simplistic and the conf car configurations were also very, very simplistic. For something that claims to be a simulator, it really doesn't live up to that name. The cars had far too much grip and the force feedback on a wheel gives little in the way of what your car is actually doing. Similarly, the sounds were pretty poor, with the only sounds that could be deemed to be good being the exhaust pops, which were a little too quiet. And to top that all off, the last problem that we had was the co-driver. I've heard some pretty rough co-drivers, but this just sounded like disjointed blabbering. It was really bad. You're better off with just switching, switching it off. The game itself, overall, it felt like a rush title. There's a lot of promise about it. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of promise and there are good aspects. Like I said, the career mode, I think that the career mode is really well built. The rally school idea, I think I've not seen that before. I think that's a fantastic idea. The actual fact that there are all the events in the rally season, that's great. And the graphics are not too bad until it rains or snows uh, or night where the lights don't really light up much. But in the standard sun or noon, dawn, dusk time, with sunshine or overcast, it looks, it does look very, very good. But the clear market for this is a casual gamer market. Those with controllers. If you want, to, if you want to race this with a wheel, I'd say you're better off going with other titles that produce a far more realistic approach. They're undoubtedly harder to play, and there will be a lot less variety in terms of locations. But they are going to be much better with a steering wheel. They're going to be far more realistic uh, in that sense. This, however, WRC, however, I do have to give it credit for being a good base to build for future games. To aim towards a simulation market, if that's where they're headed, they're going to have to make some major changes. However, if they make some minor changes, this could become a very, very good casual game too. At the moment, I've, I'm unfortunately, I've just got to give it a 60. 60 out of 100. There's plenty of work to do. But if you are a casual gamer, who just wants to have a bit of arcade rally fun on a controller, nothing too serious, do pick this up because this is worth picking up for you. And check out the link in the description box below to buy this at a discounted rate and support us here thanks to Games Planet UK. As a final note, like I keep saying, it is towards a casual gaming, towards a casual gaming scene. If you are a casual gamer, this isn't too bad as an entry. Uh, to racing. If you not generally play racing games, this isn't too bad as an entry into a racing game. You'll get a bit of a feel for rally. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be some good aspects, and then from here you can then move on to uh, more realistic games, which I think would be possibly the more logical way to go about it. So do check it out, and thank you very much for watching this review. And if you've got a game that you'd like us to check out, let me know in the comments section of this video. And if we can, we most certainly will. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Total Reviews.